the Crown Princess Couple of Sweden begin their three-day official visit to the United Kingdom. Queen Maxima of the Netherlands opens a photo exhibition in Paris. And Queen Rania of Jordan visits the King Hussein Cancer Center in Amman. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're doing well. My name is Alexandra, and welcome to your Royal Daily News for Wednesday, November 29th, 2023. In Amman, Her Majesty Queen Rania of Jordan, accompanied by Her Royal Highness Princess Gita Talal of Jordan, as chairperson of the King Hussein Cancer Foundation and Center, visited the King Hussein Cancer Center this morning. During the visit, the Queen and the Princess spent time in the pediatric cancer ward where they met with young patients who were recently evacuated from the Gaza Strip and brought to Jordan to resume their cancer treatment at the King Hussein Cancer Center. According to a press release, the children and young people are the, quote, first group of a total of 41 cancer patients from Gaza who are expected to be transferred to the center. Efforts will continue to bring as many cancer patients from the Gaza Strip to Jordan as possible, end quote. The Queen and the Princess also spent time meeting with the patients' families and were briefed by the King Hussein Cancer Center medical staff on the patients' medical and emotional conditions. At the end of the visit, the Queen and the Princess learned about the treatment protocols the young patients will receive at the center, which includes psychological support. In Madrid, Their Majesties, King Felipe VI and Queen Letizia of Spain, and Her Royal Highness, Princess Leonor of Asturias, presided over the solemn opening ceremony of the 15th Constitutional Legislature, a joint session of the Cortes Generales, the Congreso de los Deputados, and the El Senado at Palacio de las Cortes. Upon their arrival, Their Majesties and the Princess were warmly welcomed by the Prime Minister of Spain, Pedro Sanchez and by the Chief of the Defense Staff, Mr. Teodoro Esteban López Calderón. After receiving military honors and the inspection of the guards, the royal family arrived on the steps at the Palacio de las Cortes, where they were welcomed by the President of the Congreso de los Deputados, Ms. Francina Armengol, the President of the El Senado, Mr. Pedro Royan, and other members of the Spanish government. During the opening of the joint session, His Majesty the King gave a speech, stating, quote, the Spanish people have placed their honors in the most precious political asset, trust. They have entrusted them with the task of ensuring that the political pluralism represented here promotes the improvement of the living conditions of the people and groups in which it is integrated. The performance of the powers attributed to the chambers constitutes a high honor for all your honors, an honor that also entails the obligation to perform the entrusted constitutional functions always seeking the common good of all Spaniards. This is unequivocally the return due to the trust granted by the citizens." End quote. After the King's speech, the 15th Constitutional Legislature was declared open. Thereafter, the royal family arrived in the conference hall where they met with various authorities and other distinguished guests who attended the opening. In the afternoon, the king presided over the inauguration of the high-speed rail line between Madrid and Oviedo. In Luxembourg City, His Royal Highness Grand Duke Henri of Luxembourg held an audience with new members of the Bureau of the Chamber of Deputies at the Palais Grand Ducal. In Brussels, His Majesty King Philippe of the Belgians received letters of credence from newly appointed ambassadors to the Kingdom of Belgium at the Palais Royal de Bruxelles. The newly appointed ambassadors are from the Republic of Equatorial Guinea, the Republic of Guinea-Bissau, and the Republic of Nicaragua. Each new ambassador accredited to the Kingdom of Belgium visits the Palais Royal de Bruxelles to present his or her letters of credence to the sovereign. The Letters of Credence is an official document in which a foreign head of state informs a sovereign that he or she has just appointed the ambassador as the official representative in the Kingdom of Belgium. Receiving the Letters of Credence formalizes his or her entry into office in the Kingdom of Belgium.
In Paris, Her Majesty, Queen Maxima of the Netherlands, attended the opening of the exhibition entitled Vivian Sassen, Phosphor, Art and Fashion, held at the Maison Europeenne de la Photographie. The exhibition is the first retrospective in France by Dutch artist Miss Vivian Sassen. Quote, This exhibition, which comprises of more than 200 works, reveals over 30 years of multifaceted creation incorporating photography, painting, collage and video, and fashion photography. The exhibition sheds light on Vivian Sassen's creative process by focusing on two main themes, the incessant search for new photographic forms and the importance of intimacy in her work. For Sassen, photography is more than a mere surface. It is an opening onto a place where her dreams, desires, and fears coexist with the world and all its tangible reality. End quote. According to RVD, during today's visit, Ms. Sassen gave the Queen a private tour of her exhibition. The Queen also met with several French-Dutch photographers who live and work across the border. Vivian Sassen Phosphor, Art and Fashion, will be open to the public until February 11th, 2024. In Den Haag, His Majesty King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands received letters of credence for newly appointed ambassadors to the Kingdom of the Netherlands at Palais Nordande. The newly appointed ambassadors are from the State of Qatar, the Republic of Albania, and Malaysia. Their Royal Highnesses, Crown Princess Victoria and Prince Daniel of Sweden, accompanied by the Minister for Defense, Mr. Paul Jonsson, and the Minister for Infrastructure and Housing, Mr. Andreas Carlson, began their three-day official visit to the United Kingdom. The purpose of the official visit is to strengthen and promote the long-standing and excellent relations between the Kingdom of Sweden and the United Kingdom. Moreover, to highlight enhanced cooperation in the areas of security and defense, the green transition, innovation and research, and increased exchanges within the business sector, all included in the recently signed Swedish-British Strategic Partnership. The day began with the Crown Princess couple accompanied by Minister Jonsson and the British Minister of Defense, Mr. Grant Chaps, visiting Ukrainian soldiers who are being trained by officers and soldiers from the Swedish Home Guard within the framework of the British-led Operation Interflex. In the afternoon, the Crown Princess couple visited the Three Black Birds pub, where they met with the pub owner, learned about English pub culture, and listened to a presentation about East Anglia. In the evening, the Crown Princess couple and Minister Carlson attended a reception at the Swedish ambassador's residence in light of Sweden's candidacy to become a member of the IMO Council. The day ended with the Crown Princess couple attending a dinner at the National History Museum in London, hosted by Business Sweden and the Swedish Embassy. According to the Swedish Royal Court, the theme of the dinner was sustainability, innovation, and security for British and Swedish businesses, and the importance of progress in the climate negotiations during COP28 in Dubai. End quote. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for joining me this afternoon. I will be back tomorrow on Thursday, November 30th with all the latest world news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful afternoon and a great day tomorrow. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss a thing. Okay, again, have a wonderful afternoon, everyone, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.